Harry Leitze, uh, the Secretary of Commerce. I'd like to uh, thank you guys, all, all of you, for joining us this morning. And I want to thank uh, the governor for the opportunity to, to really be a part of announcing this very exciting initiative that we're, is underway. So since I've uh, been Secretary of Commerce, I've said repeatedly that we are living in unprecedented times. Uh, this, there is a great transformation taking place across all of our businesses, small, large, medium, whatever industry they're in. And we must anticipate what's next, especially when it comes to emerging technologies. Uh, business is transforming and adopting new technologies, and cybersecurity sec is critical to any company's success and resiliency. To ensure that South Carolina is a highly competitive player in the cyber industry, we're happy to unveil a new initiative today aimed at increasing our state's cyber resources and creating higher paying, technology-focused jobs. Ashley Teasdale, our Deputy Secretary of the South Carolina Department of Commerce, will provide more insight into this incredibly exciting new initiative. Ashley. Good morning, everyone. I am Ashley Teasdale, the Deputy Director for South Carolina Department of Commerce. Um, thank you, Secretary Lightsey, for that welcome, and thank you, Governor, um, for having us here today. We are honored to have the opportunity to join everyone here today for this announcement around cybersecurity. So a little bit of background. Last February, Governor McMaster and the University of South Carolina launched a statewide initiative to develop a cyber ecosystem strategy. The first step in that initiative was to conduct a comprehensive study to identify and analyze the state's current cyber strengths and gaps, with the ultimate goal of using that data to further position South Carolina as a highly competitive player in the cyber industry and train, attract, and produce top tech talent. As a result of the findings from the study, which will be shared with you shortly, the need to build on the work performed became very apparent. Today, we're excited to announce the development of a statewide initiative to enhance cybersecurity and strategically grow the cyber ecosystem across South Carolina. This new initiative is a collaborative partnership with Simon Everett, the Western South Carolina Alliance, formerly the Economic Development Partnership, thank you, Will, for your leadership, and the governor's office. The main objective will be to build on the work performed in 2021 and early 2022 to assess the state's cyber workforce, economic impact, enabling assets and competitive standing relative to the southeastern U.S. states, culminating in the production of a strategic plan for advancing the cyber ecosystem here in the state. The first item of business led by Brian Shea with Simon Everett, who you will hear from in just a few, will be to form and lead a central coordination body of stakeholders, familiarize those members with the findings and the recommendations of the 2021 study, and work with them to adjust the proposed strategic plan and implementation of activities accordingly. In closing, the South Carolina Department of Commerce is proud to be a part of this vital initiative aimed at providing a roadmap to, go to, our, to guide our state cyber ecosystem into the future. Our agency's vision is to embrace the future to ensure South Carolina's sustainable advantage. Cybersecurity and staying ahead of digital threats plays an integral role in ensuring the success of industries across the board. A robust cyber ecosystem will help ensure South Carolina has the talent and the resources that we need to lead the way. Thank you, and I look forward to the great work that we will accomplish together. And with that, I would like to welcome Brian Shea to the podium. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Brian Shea, I'm a principal at a consulting firm called Simon Everett. Um, among other things, we have experience in assessing cybersecurity ecosystems at state and regional levels and developing strategic plans to help grow them. Um, I want to thank the governor and Department of Commerce for inviting me and my team to be a part of this initiative. I also want to acknowledge Bill Kirkland, heads up the Office of Economic Engagement at the University of South Carolina. Um, at the governor's direction, Bill actually set this study into motion about two years ago. Uh, if it weren't for his leadership and his efforts, we would not be here talking about this today. So thanks, Bill, for getting us off the ground. 
I want to spend a few minutes uh, giving you some examples of some of the study findings that, uh, that came out of this effort. But first, I want to define what we mean by this cybersecurity ecosystem, this term we keep using. Uh, if you picture all of the organizations, the initiatives, the people that it requires to grow a thriving cybersecurity industry, economy, and workforce, they tend to exist across a spectrum of 10 pillars or silos. These include things like workforce development, education, incentives, defense partnerships. Um, a major part of this initiative is to break down the walls across those silos and make sure that whatever we do within every one of them is increasingly informed by and connected to what's happening in the others. So the study was primarily intended to understand the current state of play within those 10 pillars. Um, how did we do that? We interviewed over 80 key stakeholders across the state, across those 10 pillars, to understand their challenges, their needs, and their priorities. We assessed several hundred responses to an online survey, asking a broader range of stakeholders about those same issues. And we conducted months of uh, desk research to understand what's happening within those pillars, not only within the state of South Carolina, but also within five other southeastern U.S. states. This allowed us to comparatively assess how competitive are we at competing for those cyber resources with our neighboring states. So what did we find? A couple of examples. If we start off with economic growth, uh, South Carolina ranks very competitively in economic growth categories. If you look at things like job creation and population growth, it tends to rank in the top 10 or 20 states nationally. But if we look at cybersecurity specifically, we have a little bit of work to do. Um, we can look at, there are about 13 flavors of cybersecurity professionals. One of those is an information security analyst. If we look at the concentration of information security analysts in the state compared to the overall size of the workforce, we're actually below the national average and we actually trail those five other states. But the good news is the state has already proven that when it points at an industry and says we're going to grow this industry, whether it be automotive, aerospace, it is very successful at doing so. So we want to look at the programs and the initiatives that exist to grow those industries and tweak them as needed to meet the specific needs of the cybersecurity industry. The other example I'll share is within a category we call posture and readiness. This looks at things like uh, public awareness about cybersecurity, cyber hygiene, and the resources that exist to provide guidance and support to organizations before and after cybersecurity incidents. There are two great assets within the state. Uh, one, the Department of Administration currently provides that type of guidance and support to the state's government agencies. And there's an organization within the state's law enforcement division called the South Carolina Critical Infrastructure Cybersecurity Program, or SCKIC. They provide that type of resource and support to the state's critical infrastructure operators. This includes things like water treatment facilities, power plants, medical and financial services. What we heard from the survey, though, from the broader stakeholders is, we don't have those type of capabilities helping the general business community outside of critical infrastructure. And those business executives don't necessarily know where to turn to find that type of assistance. So we want to work with organizations like Department of Admin, like SCKIC, tap into their best practices and create some similar capabilities that can help the, broad, the broader community. Um, I'll end by sharing three statistics that help to answer a question I would expect to get, which is, of all the things the Governor and Department of Commerce could choose to invest in, why cybersecurity? Um, firstly, the projected demand for cybersecurity requires that we grow or attract nearly 6,000 cybersecurity workers over the next 10 years, and that's not going to happen on its own. Secondly, those cybersecurity positions currently are offering wages that are at least one-third higher than the median wage in South Carolina, and some flavors of those positions are offering wages that are two and a half times that, that median wage in the state. Um, and thirdly, um, the current unemployment rate across those cybersecurity positions um, is about one-third lower than the average unemployment rate in the state, and for certain positions, it is 10 times lower than the average unemployment in the state. So when you put those together, we're talking about investing in a workforce that has high projected demand and that offers South Carolinians outsized wage opportunities combined with outsized job security all while protecting our digital information, systems, networks, and connected devices. So we're excited to get to work. We're looking forward to doing this. And I'll turn it over to the man who's been advancing this agenda for several years now, Governor McMaster. Thank you. Thanks, Brian Shea. Uh, everything we're doing in the, in the state now depends on cyber, it seems. Um, you all have your cameras there that are transmitting pictures back. You, some of you are using your, your cell phones. So, get or, or, or send information. All, anything involves uh, electricity or data, that's cyber. Anything involving computers, that's cyber. And we have to organize our strength so that those industries can grow 
and also protect the transmission of that information and the saving of that information. You know, we have a new data center called DC Blocks that opened up in Greenville recently. We also have a, a cable coming up from South America to, to Myrtle Beach is carrying, will be carrying this data, this information. So we realize that, that, that the future is here and this, this is the future of everything that we do. I was at a meeting last week of the Southern States Energy Board and of course that was about electricity and energy and nuclear or solar and wind power and uh, everything in between. But it was quite apparent that energy, the transmission of energy and information, data in all of our industries in all of those states and I presume others as well depends on an understanding and ability to build and protect this industry. So that's what we're doing. And we started our first, I guess our major act was back in 2017 when I issued an order to create the group that Mr. Shea referred to involving the Department of Administration and, and SLED. And then in March of 2020, we had a, with the Army, the U.S. Army, we had what they call the Jack Voltaic exercise over at the Alumni Center of the University to speak about cybersecurity. Bob Caslin, who is president of the university, set that up. We have the, the Cyber Command for the Department of Defense is at Fort Gordon in Georgia. We put millions of dollars recently into the Dreamport, which will combine the resources of USC Aiken, as well as the National Guard to harness and develop this sort of cyber power and communi uh, communication. But what we know is just like everything else, it is important that all that we don't work against each other, that we consolidate our understandings, our goals, and our resources. And so that is the purpose of this. We've had this study done by Mr. Shea's firm, and it has been complete, and now he will proceed under the direction of the Department of Commerce to see exactly what, what our plan should be, how we will coordinate, harness, and energize these activities which are critical for our future. So this is, uh, and I'll issue an executive order sometime today to formalize uh, this work that we're going to be doing. But this is very exciting for the state of South Carolina. We already have about, I'm told, uh, particularly or uh, exclusively in the cyber area, 324 businesses right now. And if you count all of those that depend on them, including those that I mentioned a moment ago, it's, it's wall to wall. So this is a great collaboration among different uh, diverse parties that, will, that we believe will, again, take South Carolina into, into the future and will be a great benefit to our education, to our uh, economic growth, and, and the happy of, uh, happiness of our citizens all across the state. So if anyone has any questions, we'd be glad to try to answer them for you. Certainly. Um, I, I want to make it clear, too, that um, I don't see this as doing something new. It's building upon the work that's already being done. Uh, if there's one primary difference, I think it's a recognition that the work that is being done here, and to be fair, in most cybersecurity ecosystems, tends to be in those 10 silos. We look at what we need to do in education. We look at what we need to do in workforce development. We look at what we need to do for business incentives. But to make that work properly, you need to break those walls down, and all those decisions have to be interrelated. They need to support each other. I don't know that we've done that as much as we can just yet, so I think that's probably the, the number one primary difference is, is looking across the breadth of those 10 pillars all at once rather than addressing each one piecemeal. Uh, again, the, the primary outcome of this is to strengthen the cybersecurity workforce. I mentioned we need nearly 6,000 additional cybersecurity workers over the next 10 years. Um, I don't have the stats at hand about how many we have right now on average, but at, as of today, it'll be a challenge to, to make that. So number one is improving education all the way from K through 12 throughout the college system, throughout universities, both for degrees, for technical certificates, making sure we are growing our own cybersecurity workforce as well as workforce development programs, providing as many on-ramps as we can, no matter where you are in your career. If you want to segue into the cybersecurity industry, you have various on-ramps to help you get there. 
and at the same time being increasingly competitive at attracting cybersecurity professionals from other states? Why should a cybersecurity worker bring their talents to South Carolina? Sure, I mean, some of the metrics, and as we release more study details, that'll be in there, but some of the metrics we looked at, whether it's metrics on how many university programs the state offers, as, as one example, um, the Department of Homeland Security and the National Security Agency, they can give a university or a college a designation called a CAE, a Center of Academic Excellence in Cybersecurity. It means that your curriculum meets certain standards set by DHS and NSA. The state has seven colleges and universities right now that are certified as CAEs, which is great. And if we look only within the state, that's a good number. We should be proud of that. If we back out and look at the region at large, we actually are lower than the average in terms of how many CAEs we have for the state's population. So we want to grow more CAEs as, as, a, as a good example. So metrics like that, the study will include specific findings where we're already doing good work, but in order to keep pace and be more competitive, we need to increase those opportunities. Sure, one good example is investment. Um, of the 10 pillars we looked at, um, one that may need most work is investment. Um, investment generally in South Carolina, the numbers weren't as strong as we'd like to see, but specifically looking at cybersecurity, right now we have not told investors what we intend cybersecurity to look like in this state. If you look at major cybersecurity hubs, whether it be uh, Colorado Springs, uh, San Diego, other, other leading hubs, even what's happening in Fort Gordon, you can identify what their flavor or brand of cybersecurity is all about. If I'm an investor and I'm thinking of bringing my resources there, I know the story that I'm helping to, to promote. We haven't told that story yet about what South Carolina cyber is meant to be. So from a communications and a narrative perspective, I'm excited about today signaling to the investor community that we're about to tell that story. We want to help them get on board because we need more entrepreneurial support. We need them to, to bring their resources to the table to help entrepreneurs grow more businesses, start more businesses, and to uh, promote research and development on the technical side. Yes, yeah, so, so Commerce's main role is really going to be there to help support Brian Shea and his work. Um, this really goes back to um, a staple of what the governor talks about all the time when it comes to the strong need in the state to have coordination collaboration and cooperation. And that is going to be our role to help really drive that forward, to help support these efforts and to be sure that this initiative, the plan, the roadmap that's created um, is able to be successful and be able to be rolled out. I think that's a great question. So I think overall, the way we see it is an all the above type effort. So we have to be able to look at the workforce development side of it, um, just like what Brian said, looking at infrastructure, looking at resources, looking at incentives, um, looking at different programs that are already working that we have many of our amazing statewide partners that have already implemented cybersecurity programs and initiatives is building on the momentum that we have, being able to look at the gaps and then how can we be able to help fill that. So it's more of an all the above approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think this goes back to um, what Brian mentioned earlier, which is, you know, we have quite a bit of buckets of all types of initiatives and programs that have been stood up um, and have been successful here in the state, but um, when you look at things in more of a siloed approach, this is an opportunity to bring all of those stakeholders together um, in one set and, and we be able to create one roadmap with a collective voice and a collective mind um, to be able to look at how do we further grow the cyber ecosystem. So instead of looking at it in, in specific buckets or specific areas, we'll be able to now bring all of those voices to the table at once and be able to create a pathway forward, moving forward together. Mm -hmm. 
Well, more and more we're depending on, on computers, on, on data, on artificial intelligence. People are riding along in self-driving cars. They got their uh, systems in their homes turning on and off at different times. Bank records, all of your money, whether people can get to it besides you or not. All of this stuff is in, involved with, with da data and cyber security as well as in, and the satellites that we have in the air, the planes that are being flown and being built in Boeing that, that uh, uh, BMW is building and the Volvo and everybody in between in, is involved with artificial intelligence, data and cyber uh, devices of some kind. So for, for, for our, our state to, to thrive, we, we need to be sure that we're at the head of the pack and by organizing all of the d different silos we have, putting together, uh, measuring, as Mr. Shea is doing, measuring, identifying uh, all of our assets, we'll be able to form a team to where we can, we can do the things necessary, judging, looking at what other states have done, what other countries have done, and we'll be able to use our, our assets, which are formidable in our state, to, to see that, that we are progressing uh, very, very well. And, and it, it'll be a, a, a thorough, a, a, a comprehensive impact on just about everything we do in the state. Everybody relies on those kind of records, those kind of devices. So we want to know what we're doing for national security as well as economic prosperity. Well, we'll learn that when we when we have the plan that Mr. Shea finishes within within a year. That's that's one purpose to to find out uh, exactly where we're going and how we're gonna get there. And it'll it'll take some thinking, collaboration, communication, cooperation with all those that are in in the area, which includes a lot of people, to to put that roadmap together, which may change as we go along, because there'll be bound to be discoveries and inventions and things that will uh, have an impact on, on all of this as we go along.